This weekend, I'll be making a little bit of history as the only color analyst to broadcast two separate games for two separate networks in two separate cities on the same day. I did this back in 2016 as then the only person to do so, and I will do it again this upcoming weekend. My weekend starts in our nation's capital as surprising Georgetown Hoyas play host to the Lehigh Mountain Hawks in a big game in the Patriot League as Georgetown looks to even their record to four and four. Afterwards, I'll head to Baltimore as the Morgan State Bears welcome in the Howard Bison in their go-go offense and what should be a strength versus strength battle as the Bears defense is one of the best in the FCS. Now you can catch this Georgetown Lehigh broadcast live on Watt Stadium and the Patriot League Network and the Morgan State Howard game will be broadcasted on ESPN3 in the Watch ESPN app and on the local MeTV network in Baltimore. We're here with the czar Emery Hunt and the quarterback Mike Niebrick. Emery, let's start off with Lehigh, of course. 17 straight wins against Georgetown, but a different streak on their mind. Losing streaks are never fun. I've been about a lot of those in college, and you kind of want to find a win, and let's hope they can find one today against the Hoyas. Players to watch. We start off with Lehigh and a guy close to your heart, Emery, as a running back in Don Bragalo. You talk about one of the best backs in the FCS, a guy that is a few yards away from breaking 4,000 for a career. That's impressive for a tailback. Glad he's out here today healthy and ready to go. Second a player to watch for this Lehigh team, it is George Portoreal. Portoreal is one of those guys that they're looking to to replace the talented duo they had last year of Gatlin Casey and Troy Pelletier. Let's see if Portoreal can do his job today and help bring home some points for Lehigh. Our other player to watch for Lehigh on the defensive side of the ball, it's Sam McCloskey. You talk about a safety being your leading tackler. He's a two-time team captain, and they're going to have to have him be huge today, especially against the running game of Georgetown. Guys and Let's go ahead and jump into our keys to the game. Let's start off with Lehigh Emery. What do the Mountain Hawks have to do today to be successful? Well, first of all, the offensive line has to bring their A game. Every time we talk about Georgetown, it's about run game and defense. Well, defensively, talking about the front seven, that's probably the best front seven they're going to face this year outside of Colgate. So that offensive line has to be great. And they have to think players, not plays. Find your best players and figure out ways to get them involved in the game early and often. And also when you're talking about playing Georgetown, you have to win the special teams battle. If they can do that, they can win this game. Up on the line of scrimmage, Mays looking over the middle. He'll complete it. Puerto Real has the first down and a lot more. Puerto Real at the 30-yard line. Will they catch him? They will not. Touchdown, Lehigh. It's a phenomenal throw right there by Brad Mays. He actually surprised Puerto Real on that pass because he threw it with anticipation, and it hit him right in the arms as he went up to, to grab that football and was able to outrace to the end zone, a guy that we brought up in the open that they're going to have to create plays for him, find, uh, go to your players and not think plays. And this is a great route, great throw, and great run after the catch. It's the Morgan State Bears. It's the MEAC College Football Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. I'm Phil Shinner alongside my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt. Howard, they have one of the most explosive offenses in all of college football. Wide receiver, Jaquez Ezzard, the guy's on fire. First Howard player to ever go back-to-back -back with three touchdown games. And we had him last week against Delaware. See, he scored pretty early in that ball game. We talk about a player that has everything that you want at the position. He can play inside, he can play out. He's going to have to be big again today for Howard's offense. Morgan State's defense, fourth in the MEAC. They may have three of the best linebackers in the entire league. And Ian McBurl, he is playing great. Monster game last week. You talk about a guy that's going to have to play sideline to sideline because Howard's offense does a great job of working horizontally on a football field. If McBurl can be an explosive player on defense, they can have a big day in this ball game, surprising against Howard. Emory, you got your primetime outfit on. You're ready to go, right? Red means ready. Let's go. The red light's on. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, the Beltway rivalry. This is one thing the Morgan State defense likes to do, and they get to Newton. And Ian McBurrow, the guy there, had a huge game last week. That's his fifth sack of the season. Yeah, they really were able to flush Newton outside the pocket and took away two of his options at the far side of the field, and that pressure came quick. We talked about McBurrow in the open, being a dynamic player on the defense side of the ball. He was able to do that on that play, getting the sack and forcing a rare three and out for the Howard Bison offense. Doesn't have that's a heck of an effort job right there by Cook. Most defensive backs would have given up and, and yielded the touchdown to Chase, but just an effort play, and Coach is going to love that in the film because he really came in and knocked that ball out, and now it's going to be a touchback as opposed to a touchdown.
It's Lamar Jackson. I mean, from a fantasy perspective, from a real life perspective, he's the guy that changes the game. And you mean to tell me a guy can throw for 300 yards and rush for 150 yards and score six touchdowns total? I want that guy on my team. I want that guy on my fantasy team. I want him on my real football team. To me, that's the one player that really dictates how you cover him, how you defend him. It makes everybody around him better uh, because you're only going to see certain coverages, mostly zone, because you can't uh, you know, can't play man versus a mobile quarterback, especially one that's as fast as him. You can't really spy him with a linebacker because he's going to outrun him, so you have to sacrifice the safety, which will then make the tight end one-on-one. Receivers get one-on-one coverage. The running game is going to be better because you can't really crash down and defend the run. You've got to keep the backside gate closed, and that's where the running game happens. So that's the number one player in this draft. I just find it comical that a guy with this talent, this level, level of production, and consistency and growth over the last three seasons – is not talked about as being the number one option in this draft. Oh, no, this is why it's so funny because I was in college. We were you know, playing college ball when Vic was happening, and we actually ended up getting the offensive coordinator from Virginia Tech to be our next head coach. This was happen- happening two years down the line, obviously. But at that time, we were like, man, this guy is great. And he was all projection because he wasn't the most polished passer. Their offense was 75% power running game and, and Vic off play action, finding somebody open and scrambling. But you you couldn't pass on him at one because you'd never seen a quarterback run a 4-2. You'd never seen a quarterback with that laser of an arm. We're going to figure it out, but we got to take him. With Lamar Jackson, you're getting a more polished version of Michael Vick, a guy that's a more elusive runner that can protect himself so he won't get hurt, and a guy that can throw the football coming out of a pro-style offense at Louisville with that uh, – Earhart Perkins offense that he runs with Bobby Petrino and keep in mind Petrino we never got to see what he would have looked like with Michael Vick because Vick went to jail this is exactly what it would have looked like had Vick and Petrino been able to work together in the league this is a can't miss prospect in my opinion football game of the week on the Sports Fever television network. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. I'm Phil Schitter alongside my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. Two of the top offenses in the league, two of the top quarterbacks will be showcased today for FAMU, Ryan Stanley, fifth all-time on the Rattler passing list. And he's a program-changing prospect. He's about 2,000 yards away from breaking Quinn Gray, who is the all-time leading passer at FAMU. And you talk about a guy that since he's gotten on campus, this team has been a different ball club. He is one of the best players in the conference. It started off running back by committee for Howard. No longer Dietrich Parson is the guy. The last three games, close to 300 yards and five touchdowns. That was all done in the last three weeks. Don't let the 5'8", 195-pound frame fool you. This guy is a power runner that also has the ability to hit the home run and make you miss in a fumble. They need him to be big time today against the Rattlers. Ezra takes away a lot of double coverage away from Anthony, which gives him these opportunities to make those one-on-one plays. But, again, this is a guy that has 6'3", 219, big-time physical receiver that can play inside or out. Third and seven, 40% on third downs this year for Howard. The completion to Anthony in the first down inside the 10-yard line. And that is Kyle Anthony's 40th catch of this season. And good enough for a Bison first and goal. Love the temperament of Anthony. He doesn't care if he's going over the middle of the field, seeing a linebacker or a safety with a bead on him. He's going to make that reception, hold the football, and pick up the first. Catch! Ho oh, ho! Kez Ezard, welcome back. The one-hander for the touchdown. Outstanding throw, outstanding reception right there by the Howard Bison offense. That's probably the best throw Caleb Newton has made in the last couple of games. And what a great job by Ezard using his free arm to keep the distance away from the defensive back and reaching out with his forehand to go out there and make the one-handed reception. Outstanding play all around. 30-yard line was looking for Chad Hunter. Number three receiver in the all of the MEAC and the leading receiver on this FAMU team. This is a big FAMU offensive line, and they are also athletic. These are guys that can move left and right as well as they can go downhill. So the protection is going to be there. You want to see Stanley start to settle down a little bit and find targets consistently going down the field in between the hash marks. Look at Brian Cook, a sophomore who's played big the last couple of weeks for the Howard defense. Second and 10. Stanley, plenty of time to throw. Going to go towards the end zone. Has a man wide open, but overthrew Williams. That would have been six. But Stanley's pass, a little too far. Williams was open. Three things that I just talked about. Stanley settling down, the offensive line giving him protection, and finding a deep shot over the middle of the field in between the hashes. All were perfect right there. Just got to connect on that throw. 
Great job by Brian Cook to catch up and make that a very tough uh, reception attempt. Better thrown ball, though, probably would have been six. Would have been a touchdown. Third and ten from the 38. Let's see if Stanley can bounce back. He's been very, very good this season. Stanley looking right side, now fires across the middle, has the completion, and the first down for FAMU. Throwing in traffic, and the big catch there by Smith. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. I don't know how that football got it between three Bison defenders, but heck of a job right there by the receiver, just making that reception, keeping his eye on the ball. And you saw how it was surrounding the receiver, and no one got their hand up to bat that ball away. Big number 59, the linebacker, Garrett Reeves, was the closest. Leads the MEAC in tackles for Morgan State. They nearly came back to beat Bethune Cookman. They found their passing game. They found a new quarterback in DJ Galat. Galat has an opportunity ahead of him in this ball game and further down the line because if he can bring balance to this offense, it really opens up things completely for Morgan State. They have the running game. Can he get the passing game in the match? It's going to be key if Galat can have a big day. It's the four interceptions this year. Second and ten for the Hornets. Daniels will run and falls and loses two yards. Rico Kennedy standing in front of him. Two-yard loss. Rico Kennedy there to make the stop. Again, those linebackers, you have three guys that are all athletic, they're aggressive, and they're able to make plays going side on the sideline. Good job by Rico Kennedy playing the block off and then getting in there and making that stop. So the first two plays of the game for Morgan State, their linebacking core has already made their presence felt in this matchup. You also bring up two other guys, Sam Boyd, of St. Augustine's University down there in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's another one. He's 6'4", about 245, 250. Big fan of his game because he can play that pseudo tight end position. He's probably going to grow into a tight end. He has dynamic hands. And when I say dynamic, I mean he snatched the ball out of the air, able to pull away from a defender. So he's another one. And we go down to the Division Three ranks with James Okiki of Wesley. One-year high school football uh, sort of had to find his way football-wise before getting onto the field at Wesley, and he still has a ton of upside. 6'4", 225, can play outside or inside. I think he's better suited as an inside receiver. Uh, you see him on the screen. This guy's just making play after play and still has a lot to learn about his game. And I think, you know, when you have guys coming from these lower levels, they're going to play all four years, four or five years. They get the consistency in coaching, and they, you know, with a pro uh, system, they get more access to nutrition, better access to weight programs. So they're going to still grow physically. So that's why you look at that upside coming from these smaller schools. Howdy, football fans. Jeremy Huber here with Emory Hunt and Yosef Nasser. Guys, it's senior day. Emory, of course, you had a few of these in your career. What's it like for these guys right now for this momentous day they're about to undertake? Well, it's the culmination of what you've done as a college football player. It's great to be out here with your family, friends, your teammates for the last time putting on a college football uniform for some of them. A Holy Cross who's had themselves a pretty good year. Let's go ahead and get into our players to watch in this one. First off for the Crusaders, it's their wide receiver, Blaze Bell. And I'm a big fan of Blaze Bell. He's a big-bodied wide receiver, 6'2", about 215. And you talk about a guy that has been in this program through the ups and downs, and you want to see him come out here on senior day for Georgetown, but his last game as well to get out there and put together a great performance. Second player to watch on the defensive side of the ball, it's their great linebacker, Ryan Brady. Ryan Brady is all over the football field. He leads the team in total tackles, TFLs, he's a captain. And this is a guy that's one of those cornerstone players that when you're looking at the team and how do we win against Holy Cross, you have to find ways to block Ryan Brady. He has to be big in this game for the Crusaders. And the third player to watch, Emory, it's a big play guy in Teddy Capsis. Well, the front end helps out the back end, right? When you look at Teddy Capsis, he's a guy that leads the team in sacks, second in TFLs and quarterback hits. But you look at what he does up front, controlling the line of scrimmage, maintaining the line of scrimmage, which allows a guy like Ryan Brady free reign to the football. So if he's big, Brady will be big as well. Better. Second and 15, looking over the middle. That's picked off again. Hoyas with another interception, trying to take it in. Wilson, he'll pitch it away, going and getting into the end zone or very close. Is it a touchdown? It is. Hoyas on the board. Ramon Lyons off the pitch off from Ahmad Wilson. Hoyas opportunistic and with an even bigger lead. Two things I look for for defensive players if you're talking about the NFL or what have you, but the essential core principles, can you score? 
can you take the ball away? We saw Georgetown do a great job of taking the ball away. They were trying to run the slant wheel route behind it, but it was just well played by Ma Wilson, who just didn't break uh, coverage and was able to pick the ball off and had the wherewithal to find his teammate right there for the for the lateral and got in for the touchdown. And Lions taking it all the way there again as the Hoyas with a 21-5 to lead. Well, what happened on that play, it was a great play call because you're taking advantage of a defense's aggressiveness. So you had the slant wheel come behind it. But what happened was Amal Wilson read the eyes of Jeff Wade, didn't get out that coverage. They expected him to buzz completely out on the flat route and, and cover the wheel, but he didn't move, which kept him right in the passing window. You can see right there they're looking at it completely. He saw the combination coming, didn't get out of his – his area, they were able to pass that route off on the backside to the safety, which put him in that position to where he was essentially an unaccounted uh, for defender, made the interception. So gamesmanship within the game, just excellent football IQ right there by Ma Wilson. And we saw asked. Penny go to the Seattle Seahawks e. in the first round. And if you want to go back to my midseason mock draft, which mm -hmm. was in November, uh, in the first round, I gave Seattle – Rashad Penny. I was yep. like, this may be the surprise of the first round because, let's be honest, they need a tailback. They need someone that could hit the home run. Penny gives them that every time you look up, he's hitting a home run. Again, when you return kicks, you're fast. When you return punts, you're quick. This guy returned kicks. Got his opportunity to be the starter. Ran for over 1,000 yards last year as a backup. Started this year 2,200 yards. And the difference between him and Donnell Pumphrey is, Look at the yards per carry, 4.6 right. career, 6.5 for a guy like Penny. This is an amazing player, and now Seattle is going to get back to what they did well when they were in the contention for Super Bowls because you have now a game-breaker in the backfield. Don't forget New York, so uh, we'll look forward to having that for sure. Sterling, when you look at the ground game, I, I, I'm a former college running back. Okay. I hate when people say. Years ago, Sterling. <laughs> I hate when people say. I hate when I people can't say. Oh, I tell you what, listen. I mean, oh, he's suited in the booty, son. Oh, yeah, he stay he, fresh. He, he, he not, stay he, fresh, he, son. That's that Burberry watch. You, you don't go unnoticed. I, 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 played, I played against Eli in high school. That's how old I am. So we're the same age. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, but uh, I get tired of people talking about the position and, and as it just being a monolith. But you know how the running game helps you guys out, especially when you have a game breaker. Can you explain to the folks out there, how does that help you guys do your job? Yeah, I mean, you have to defend it. That's that's the way it helps us. I mean, those uh, linebackers, they have, to, they, have to, they have to guard the run first, and that helps us a lot. Um, you know, it allows you to get behind them. And then uh, the safeties also have to, to get in the run game a little bit too. I feel like, Sterling, when people watch you play, they only try to pigeonhole you as one guy. But going back to your Oklahoma games, you can play all spots. And there's about yeah. three different spots, maybe four if you depend on the offense you're in. Yeah. What's been criminally underrated about your game as a receiver? I think just what you said. I mean, playing outside. Um, you know, I've been more of a slot guy. That's where I do most of my damage. And I love the slot. Uh, but I had times to go outside. And every time I went outside, I, I showed up. And uh, in this offense with uh, our new coaching staff and uh, the new officer coordinator, uh, I will have a chance to go outside. So uh, I can't wait to see what I can do out there and show everybody what else what I can do. Right, let's recap Emery's picks. Here's your cheat sheet, if you will. You can take a screen grab if you need it. He's got Los Angeles, Green Bay, Houston, Cal, Washington, and Virginia Tech. Those are the picks, and before I let you go, Emery, you were on point with North Texas two weeks ago. You were on point with Army. You got any extra little picks there that I can write down on here? I have a personal pick for you right here. <laughs> My Raging Cajuns are 50-point or 49-point underdogs against Alabama. I think the Raging Cajuns can cover or at least take the points. They won't lose by 49 or 50 points. That game, I believe, will be take the over, obviously, but look for my Raging Cajuns to not lose by 49 points. So take the Cajuns and the points against Alabama and that huge number. Why you got to do that to me, man? Why you got to do that? Like, uh, you've been you've been hot on your picks, on your upset picks, but now you're going to at least get them to cover over Alabama. All right, we'll see what happens. You've been hot as of late. Emory Hunt with his picks. Emory, thanks. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you another edition of Four Downs with the Czar, where the New York Jets played host to the Indianapolis Colts, and the Jets were able to come away victorious by the score of 42-34, to pushing their record to 3-3 three and three on the season. Offensive takeaways in this ball game for the New York Jets. Sam Darnold, I thought, played his best game as a pro. He saw the field well. He actually outplayed Andrew Luck in this ball game, so he did a great job getting the football to many different targets in this ball game. 
Quincy Enuma went down early with an injury, but guess what? Jermaine Curry stepped up, stepped in, and played exceptionally well. Yeah, because a lot of times it, it takes, they say it takes one to know one. Yeah. And when running backs are going through certain things, you kind of can dive back in your experience. Like, okay, I remember that being this and this being this, and right. maybe look for this and this, this, and that. Right. So when you look at the position now, and it's funny because nowadays you hear people say, oh, the position is devalued, oh, you don't need a running back, you shouldn't draft a running back high. First of all, how silly is that statement? And second of all, why is this position so critical to your football team? I mean, I, me personally, I really feel like you have to run the football to win the football game. Mm -hmm. and, you know, if I'm wrong, you know, I don't know. But, <laughs> you know, unless you have Aaron Rodgers, right? Right, exactly. You know, showed off the other night. But um, you have to be able to run the football. Um, fortunately for me, everywhere I've been, you know, it was imperative that you run the football.